Hello everyone, how are you today? This is Mark. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. He had been studying English for months before he became my student. In this lesson, we're going to look at the past perfect continuous, so stay tuned. So here we are with the past perfect continuous. Let me tell you first that you need to know the past perfect simple. I can sum it up for you, but if you want to watch a lesson on the, on the past perfect simple, you may click here. Well, the past perfect simple, like the continuous, uh, uses the auxiliary had plus the past participle for the past perfect simple. If you look at the timeline, it's an action that happened before another past action. So, I give you an example. It read, she had met her new English teacher before he introduced himself to the class. So, he, she had met her new English teacher before he introduced himself to the class. Here we have before. Before is a subordinating conjunction. If you want to watch a lesson on subordinating conjunctions, you may click there. Before means earlier than the time when something happened. So, in that case, she had met her new English teacher before, so earlier than the time when he introduced himself to the class. So, it's an action that happened before another action. Well, that's for the past perfect simple. For the past perfect continuous instead, um, you use it when you want to talk about an action that happened continuously in the past before another action. And I uh, drew here the timeline so you can see the past perfect continuous continuously and then the past simple a point in the past. Okay, so obviously we use the past perfect continuous to emphasize duration and is used with another past, generally with a past simple. The auxiliary, like I said, is had. And we use the past participle of the verb to be, being, and then the ing verb or ing verb. So let's look at my first introductory example. He had been studying English for months before, so subordinating conjunction before, he became my student. So if you look at the timeline, he had been studying English for months before he became my student. So he became my student is right after in the timeline. So, we use uh, also when or because and for since. I'm going to uh, take a look at that in a minute. Another example. They were lost because, and here we have the example with because, they hadn't been using a map, for example, in Rome, and some tourists. So, they were lost. They were lost right here. Why? Because, so cause, they hadn't been using a map. So they weren't using an, a map. So this is before they were lost, right? And because is showing a cause, right? So the formulas, the three different formulas. So for a positive sentence, we use the subject plus the auxiliary, to, which is had, then been, then the uh, ing verb and then the object. So the uh, another example, I had been waiting for years, I had been waiting for years when I finally got the news, when I finally received the news. A negative sentence could be subject, then we need the auxiliary plus not for sure to show the negative part of the sentence, then been, then we need the ing verb and then the object. She hadn't been using her mobile when the teacher collected her test. So she hadn't been using her mobile 
when the teacher collected her test. So for interrogative um, uh, sentence, we need if we have the WH question word, so who, how, when, why, etc., plus the auxiliary, plus the uh, subject, plus been, plus ing verb, plus etc., the time expression, for example. In this case, I didn't use the WH question word, so I went through um, using the auxiliary first. Had you been running when I stumbled upon you last week? Had you been running when I stumbled upon you last week? Stumble upon means when I met you. Okay, like I said, we use other conjunctions and for example, for or since, and uh, we already used for in some examples, four years, for example, right there. But since, an example, I had been watching that show on TV, for example, I had been watching that show since it started. So since is for the definite specific time in the past and for is for a period of time. And if you want to watch a lesson on for and since, you may click there. Now, um, do not confuse it with the past uh, continuous. The past continuous is an action that happened progressively in the past and is finished. There is no comparison with another past. Okay, so let's mm, take a look at the example. He was thirsty, so he was thirsty because he was running so much. He was running at that moment and he was thirsty at the same time. So at that moment, he was thirsty. Instead, if I wanted to use the past perfect continuous, is another meaning. He was thirsty, so he was thirsty, I'm thirsty, uh, because he had been running so much. Because he had been running so much. So he had been running. So this is uh, over a period of time in the past and it's finished. He had been running so much. So right here, he had been running so much and he was thirsty right there. Okay, remember that because we're talking about the past perfect continuous, uh, we use uh, dynamic verbs and not stative verbs. What do I mean by dynamic or stative verbs? There is a lesson on this point. You can click there to watch that lesson. But, however, dynamic verbs are action verbs like go, like study, for example, like watch, watch TV, like wait. So, you can see that we use study right there. We use used or using in this case, wait, um, running, okay? We use all dynamic verbs or action verbs. We never use it with stative verbs unless there are some exceptions, but I'll let you watch those exceptions um, on the video that I prepare for you about dynamic and stative verbs. So, never use it with the, with the know, understand, I had been knowing, I had been understanding, you cannot say it. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any comments, I mean, any questions, or if you want to type your own example on the past perfect continuous, you may do so under this video. If you want to share the lesson, you may do so. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. And having said that, I wish you the best and I see you next week with a new grammar lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.